All right. Or hello, if you're speaking English and not Bristolian. I'm Chio, and I'm going to try my best to talk about my inspiration. Um, I apologise for the accent before everything. Just, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's an awful accent, but tough crap, it's the accent I've got. I never speak. I mean, I, I didn't speak until I was about five years old. When I was a kid, um, my brother used to speak for me. I was the person who was sat in the corner, just saying nothing, looking into dead space like a little weirdo. But um, my mother used to just get paper, pencil, he'd be okay, just stick him in the corner. Don't poke him with a stick, just keep feeding him. And that was pretty much my growing up. I just drew and drew and drew. Inspirations come later on in life, really. I just drew from my imagination, which was very vivid and very strange. I used to obviously read things like the Beano, but I didn't really like it. It didn't really have the feel that I wanted. So I used to just draw weird stuff, a lot of spaceships and things like that. Uh, so what we're going to start off with, the first inspiration or the thing that really hit me the biggest. Obviously I was into hip hop and then of course, the impact that this book had was incredible. It's still gives me chills looking at it and this is my original copy which I stole which I'm disgusted about obviously but um so when was this the 84 1984 before probably 80 percent of you were even born graffiti had been going for quite a while in New York at that time and in the US and um we were getting trickles of it in the UK and it was just, I don't know what it was, there was a magic and um, seeing all these letters and on trains, I think it was because it was a bit naughty as well, but um, we used to, I used to, and I still do, pick this up and just look through it and look through it and look through it. But this is about my influence and when I was looking through this I kept thinking this is these reoccurring characters this chap what's that and then this page which is the sexiest page for me in any book and then I saw this and I thought what the and then that and then it, it was like this and then this, and then I looked in the corner, and it's got Source of Dondi's character of Vaughn Bodie. And I thought, who the hell is Vaughn Bodie? I've never heard of this guy. I've never seen his stuff, and here it is. It's everywhere. And there was just something about it. It's amazing we won't talk about that, because that's from Wizards. Thief. Another Cheech Wizard. And then I found out these names, Cheech Wizard, and the Lizards, and the Broads, and it, and it just... I was absolutely blown away and needed to find the comics, or where you could find some more Vaughn Bodie images. So fortunately, in Bristol, we had an amazing little comic book shop, and it was called... Um, forever people and it was in a place called um, Park Street and it was this I don't know just the smell of the place you would walk in and it would be just comics everywhere racks and racks of oh, one minute paper pencil 
pants on. So, shop, street, door. I have this uncanny ability, if I, I, can, I only have to walk into somewhere once and I can draw a floor plan of it. Yeah, I know, it goes back to being the weird kid again. You walk in the door, and there would be the counter, very large man with a Metallica t-shirt on, sat behind. Then you'd have a rack of comics, and then there was a kind of a mezzanine level here, with stairs. And then there's this little section in here, which was underneath. I can remember it vividly. Racks of comics, racks of comics. This is where all the Fangora and things like that was, which I got into for a while, but grew out of. Um, and I was, I would sniff around here and I would look everywhere for it. And then I went down here, and amazingly, there was some Vaughan Bodie. So of course, immediately I stole it. <laughs> being the little scumbag that I was at the time and going through a bit of a rough spot and uh, not having any money. What was I supposed to do? I needed Vaughan Bodie, so I stole a copy. And then I got on the bus and I nearly cried with excitement. When you walked into Forever People, immediately you felt like a nerd, obviously. Which is not a bad thing because I am a nerd. Um, as I say, it was the smell. I'm very. I've got a strange thing about smells, and it, it, they say it evokes um, memories and things like that. And I can I can smell it now, and just that dusky kind of. All the dirty old comics, you filthy little comics. I used to spend ages in there, just flicking through, flicking through, flicking through. And it'd be Marvel, Marvel, yawn, yawn, bore, bore, bore. 2018, uh, and then I'd go to the horror section, and it'd be a Fangora, and et cetera, et cetera. And I can remember walking up the mezzanine section, and I think it was all DC and things like that on the mezzanine section. And then to the left, there was this black and white comic, and I thought, that's interesting, that's new. And I'll put the image up. And I initially thought it was Japanese translated into English. Should I buy this? And I thought, nah, bollocks. And it was in too much of an open space to steal. So unfortunately, I didn't get it. Lo and behold, it became quite a big thing. And I wish I did get my hands on it. And I've got a very clear image of seeing it. So whether I, d I am pretty damn sure that I saw that Ninja Turtle comic on the wall in Forever People. I'll have to check my dates so I don't look like a complete fanny, but I'm pretty sure I saw that there and I flicked through it and wish I nicked it. Yep. The original, the original, should I say, Contraband, the stolen comic from the early 80s and my oh my, when I opened this on the bus. With the early stuff, obviously he's finding his style. I was looking at it thinking, well that doesn't look the same, that doesn't look the same. And then you start to see it change. And then wallop, excuse the boobies. Look at this. I mean, it, I don't know what it is. I've never been able to explain what it is about Vaughan's work. Um, it's so simple, but the style is so fresh. Just it, even that stance, unbelievable, iconic, iconic stance. 
the two legs down, one slightly forward, one slightly back. That is just so damn cool. It's unbelievable. And it's a bit fruity as well. It's a bit a bit ooh la la. But um I mean I was looking through this thinking I I was literally shaking looking through it and I don't know why. And then I thought, right, I need more of this. You can see how brown it is and look at the state of it. And that's from the early 80s. And then, yeah, another one. Um, but I think it, it, with, it, with comic book artists, a lot of them, there's, a, there's tons of detail, really tight lines, tons and tons and tons. And with this, it's just, it's the lack of lines, I think. And the way that he doesn't draw all the border, the character fits into the border, so it's the foreground, and it gives it depth. And then the way the foot, he doesn't underline the foot, you know, he just puts a shadow on the back. And But it just works. It's just unbelievable. I mean, I was lucky enough to meet um, Mark, his son, and even had a show with him um, in London. I can't even remember the date. It was a while ago. But um, it was one of my dreams, obviously. It's the way I drew as a kid. Kind of felt the same, so it was comfortable. When I looked at his artwork, it felt comfortable. I knew that if I copied it, I could draw it because it's sort of the way that I drew. When I looked at things like 2000 AD and things like that, they were completely alien to me. They were amazing drawings, but they just didn't, I don't know, they just, I, I could never replicate it because it's not the way I draw. I like to draw quite simple and bulk color and kind of like a manga or anime shading. Before anime even came to the British Isles, I was doing bulk shading and there wasn't any fading involved. It was just lumps of color and shadow and what have you. Vaughan Bodie died too early, was an absolute genius, unbelievable mind. He used to create worlds, the plants, the language, the landscape, the buildings, the world, and then go right next world. And then he could link them all together and create stories around these worlds and all the little beasties that lived on it. It's just, it's beyond amazing. Um, so this is my inspiration. I mean, that's the first books which are just, I would never part with those. And then we've got, boom, big boys. Full color, oh my God, I think I've just died and gone straight to dead bone. Look, worlds, buildings, animals, saucy ladies with the babuccinos out, caveman in a lump of ice. It's, 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 I just love this stuff. This pencil work is lovely. Everything about it is lovely. Just, I don't know. I see, I'm, I'm lost for words sometimes when I look through these books. It still now just brings these emotions over me. <laughs> Not that kind of emotion, but just of this. And it, this is when it, I discovered, I thought, how does he color these? And then when you go back to Subway Art and you see the pens they're using, I mean, that, that was graphic markers were something that used to have shitty little felt tips that used to just rip holes in the paper. But, and then it, I found graphic markers, of which I've still got some from when I was 18. That's 30 years ago, by the way. Um, 
and then being able to learn how to do these solid colors with the graphic markers I had to steal a lot of pens <laughs> well, I was such a scumbag I'm going straight to hell I know but I'm just seeing these bulk colors and the shading and the, oh look at it look how vibrant it is and how bright and it's just unbelievable this one I had to buy on because it, I did have this one originally and then someone stole it I don't know who well there we go that's karma for you um, so I ebayed this one tip B amazing it's possibly not the greatest stuff to show to uh, I have quite a young following sometimes and seeing a lady's boobies probably a bit of a shocker saying that what you can look out on your mobile phone these days um, look at it this is incredible stuff obviously everybody's heard about this guy and these are reprints I don't know who did these are just but to buy the originals are you've got no chance or if you have got a chance you've got to have a lot of money which I don't so these are just reprints but yeah Vaughan Bode the man unbelievable stuff I mean I have other things as well uh, uh, Vaughan's we have rare and well done with a lot more of the obscure kind of stuff just like this little spock yeah it did do you know what I have never read one of the strips never I just I haven't got it in me to read one of the strips I copied that for the show I had with Mark I'll pop it up on the screen I stole that position and put my face on it. We got this one, which is a bit more of his older stuff. But everybody's heard of Vaughn Bodhi now. If you haven't, then I suggest you go out and look for it because you won't be disappointed. I said it's so integral in in graffiti. It's like it was designed for it. It was designed to be fresh and have a bit of attitude and just sort of. It was so ahead of his time. And Mark is, the, 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 is taking the lineage on even further. He's recreating his dad's stuff. He's doing new stuff. He's just keeping the Bodhi name going. Thank God. Because it would be a shame for that name to ever go away. Because it is, is part of history within what I love. And if you're watching this, it's possibly something that you love. And I just think it is the coolest shit on the planet. Then you got this. Look at this. Original hardback. Dead bone. So, I had this framed. I was lucky enough that when um, when I did the show with Mark, um, he brought a ton of his dad's original sketches. And embarrassingly, he put them out on the table and I started to cry and I had to leave the room. And I could hear him say, is he okay? <laughs> and I was out in the alleyway having a little sob because I never thought that I would actually <clears throat> physically be that close to an original drawing it, because I've dreamt of it all my life up to that point obviously hopefully I've got a little bit more life left not the way I'm feeling at the moment but so buy everything I've done because I might not be here for long <laughs> joke um, so if we get closer Look at that. 
original sketch for the front cover of that. Now, to some people that would be very boring, but to me, this is this is just the nuts. It's not a very detailed sketch, but you can see everything in it that went into that. And it is, uh, unfortunately, at the time I didn't have the money because I was gonna buy it off of Mark. So a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, uh, Wayne, bought it and said, when I have the money, I can have it off of him. Unfortunately, Wayne passed away. So this sketch was in his house doing nothing. So I talked to his widow and I got the sketch. I thought I'd give it the respect it needs for Vaughan and for Wayne and just get it framed nicely. But this, I still quite can't believe that I've got it. The great man himself has um, done that. Left-handed, same as me. Allergic to cats, same as me. Likes to wear a wedding dress. Oh no. Look at that. That's just a couple of the graphic markers that my father bought for me on my 18th birthday and they still work. Absolutely amazing. And I only had about five, and I've got these. I used to nick everything. I was a kid, I had no money. Don't steal, for God's sake. The things are so cheap these days, you don't have to. It's all disposable, oh God, I'm so old. Um, yeah, magic markers, look at these. Bad boys, still work. 30 years old. You buy, I won't name any names, obviously, but the newer markers run out in five minutes. It's, it's crap. You do half a page and it's bunk gone. That's another one in the bin, more plastic waste. I still use these, the simplicity. Is the key. Simple doesn't mean bad. If you've got a style, then it, I mean, just it can be perfect, just like Vaughn's. I mean, you got just draw a lizard. I mean, it's just, it's, there's nothing to it, but it's just, there's something about it. I mean, to me anyway, this may be complete junk to some people, but. Big bendy hat. And the way you used to, like on the tongue, you wouldn't draw the bottom bit. I think it's just incredibly simple, but beautiful. Obviously I've added the hat, but. Yeah. I can even do his signature embarrassingly. I think he used to do a little doodad on there. Something like that. 
but you see just the the lines that and he also used to do these little shadows under there and it just pushes everything back just with a little shadow just pushes everything back and it doesn't take much Zooks indeed. And hopefully I'll do some more of these a little better next time.